In this video, we're going to use Playwright to record our videos of our session. We're going to use PyTest and Visual Studio Code, but you can see here that the tests are running, and as tests are failing, it's creating these video files of each of the tests with the test names and also which browsers are there. So if I open up this folder while this is still running and go to these videos, if I click on one of these WebM files, it happens extremely quickly, so hopefully that's picking that up but it takes only about one second. And if I slowly scroll through here, you will see that it actually loads up the page. It scrolls down, it clicks, and then it goes to the next part of the page. So the first thing we're gonna do is set up Visual Studio Code. And I'm gonna do that with you guys so that you can see how I'm gonna have mine configured here. So the first thing I did was install the, the plugin for Python. Click this first one and go ahead and install that. And one of the things that this actually it will let you do is add unit testing for Python, and I'm going to enable that here. So I'm just going to go up to view, click, or, or you can hit control shift P or uh, command shift P, whatever you're, you're using. Um, with the command palette, I'm going to go to Python configure tests. And once you're in this configure tests, I'm choosing PyTest because that's what we're going to be using here. And I'm just going to choose the root directory. But now that I added this extra icon in here, so when you click on this icon, this test icon that's been appeared here, you can see that you have a run all and then you can hover over a test and click the green button there. So if you click that green button, it'll actually just run that one test, which is nice, especially if you're working um, with a test with a lot of files, you don't have to run them every single time. The other nice thing is that you now have a debug here. So if I would go press uh, F9 on uh, line 57, uh, test visibility and do debug now to hit my breakpoint. You'll see that the breakpoint was hit. And the cool thing now is that I can actually debug by typing in anything I want, like page. I can expand that and view any properties or anything that are on there. So you can see here the URL it's hitting. You can see that we're actually, we actually already have a video attached, but we're going to get there in just a second. If you've watched my other videos, you've seen how we go through and write these tests. But what we haven't talked about in the other videos is how you actually can record those tests. Here on the Playwright Help, you can see that there's a whole section on videos that was added in version 110. How it works is you can assign a new browser or recording directory, and it will send a video of everything that goes on in that browser context in, until it's closed. The second you close it, it'll actually go and save it. It's all saved into a page video path, which is gonna be important later, but none of this really tells you how to do this with PyTest because PyTest, we're not setting up all the context in browsers every time. Some magic's actually going on behind the scenes. If you go to the Playwright PyTest help doc, they have this section about fixtures, which are these things that exist as hooks like you would see in other testing frameworks that do things before and after tests would run. So it's things like before test, after test, on load, those types of things. Those get handled by fixtures. And what's really cool about these fixtures is if we go into the PyTest Playwright, we can see that basically this whole library is this one file. And these are all the, all the bindings that set up those browsers and fixes. And we just don't need to normally worry about that when we write our tests. This also lets us do some more sophisticated stuff when we want to set things up to run for every test. We can just put it all in one file and make it work for our whole test run. So the way you do this with PyTest is there's one specific file we need to create. It's called conftest.py. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start just by grabbing out of the Playwright PyTest and just grabbing these first lines. There's gonna be a link to this repo in the description. So with that, I'm also gonna import two things just really quick from the standard library, but we won't talk about those right away. We'll just use them later. So now that we have all of our imports, the first thing that we really wanna do is we wanna have the browser record every single test that we run. If you read the documentation, what happens is that PyTest has these fixtures and fixtures also have scopes. So the scope that we're looking for is going to be session because that's basically one test. So the next line here is a definition of this fixture and it's named browser context args. And this one actually passes in browser context args and video path. And what these actually are 
is these are other fixtures. This one doesn't actually exist yet. We'll be creating this in a second. So what we're going to return here in this object is we're going to return browser context args. And then we're going to set the property video dir. And that's going to be set to the video path that gets passed in. And then we're going to set the viewport. And the viewport has two properties, uh, width, uh, we're going to set to 1920, and then height, which we're set, going to set to 1080. We've now done everything we need to do to record, except for we don't have a video path yet, because that's not something that Playwright sets up by default. So I'm going to create another fixture here that's just going to live for the session scope, but that way we don't have to repeat this variable everywhere. And then this, the scope has to match the other ones or else we're going to run into problems later. And then we're just going to return the string heading to a folder named videos. So let's just try running a test here. So we don't currently have any videos. And if we come down here and just go ahead and click any one of these, we get an error running our test. So if we look at the output here, sorry, my mistake, I put an S in there and it should not have had an S. So we'll go ahead and rerun a test here. And then the test passed. So let's check our folder now to see if we have a video. And we do have a video. So if we look in this folder, uh, by default, what Python will do is every time a test runs, let's just run another test here quick, or let's just run a bunch of tests quick. You'll see that every time a video runs, it gets a new GUID on it, which is nice, but it's not particularly helpful because then you have to go figure out which test is which and why, why they're failing. So coming back over to our contest.py, what I really want to do is just clean up this folder once at the start so that we can always just have this clean videos folder. That way we only have the last test run. And if we have anything that fails, we can just go in there and look to see what's failed. Okay, so we've defined PyTest session start. And this is one that exists in PyTest and it's a hook that you can basically build into. By default, it does nothing. But this runs basically before all the tests start running and it only runs once. So earlier we imported the OS module and that has a whole bunch of general stuff. But what we really care about is this path. And then what we're saying is that if videos exist, then we're going to delete all the videos in there. This is only to help us if videos was deleted, like if someone went out and deleted the whole folder, then we just would just ignore this section of code. And then here it's going to basically go through every video in that list and then delete it. And if the, for any reason someone puts a bunch of folders in there, it's also going to remove those folders. You don't need to keep that code. I just want that folder to be 100% clean at the start of every test run. And there you can see all the videos got cleaned up and it's starting all over again with a whole new set of videos. I can't match these up to these file names because there is no good way for that to happen. You would actually have to go into this file, watch it and see if you can match up that test. That's not super helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename these files with their actual test names. So I didn't create most of this code, but just so you know, and I'm not taking any credit for it, all of this code. And so I just basically grabbed this chunk right here. We get a new page, it goes to a page and then it yields. So what PyTest does right there is at this yield page, it's actually waiting for the test to run. And when the test results are complete, it gives us, it starts executing this next part of the code. So this is actually your cleanup. So you can think of anything before the yield as your setup and anything after the yield as your cleanup. So what we need to do here is grab the current path name. So we have a browser context here and that context will have multiple pages or potentially has multiple pages, but our video is actually located at the path and then the name here. So what we need to do is we need to assign that current path name to the browser context and then we're going to assign it current video name and that's because this page is going to close so we're going to lose access to that browser context we need to pass it off to something else so that we can actually use it so we're basically storing it here and then this page is going to close so that page actually exists in another thing that i'm copying off the documentation and that's the context so we've added in our other 
fixture of video path. And then we're also including one here that's request. So request actually belongs to PyTest, and that's not something from Playwright, but PyTest keeps track of the completion, the status, all of that information in this request fixture. And then we have our video path one here, but then there's also a browser name one, which again, if you go look at the help doc here in the PyTest Playwright bindings, you can see that they're saving off the browser name. I'm just using that. The first thing I've changed this with is I've grabbed the current failing tests, but that's, that's for a specific reason. And we'll get to that in just a second, but then I'm grabbing the context current video name that we saved right here. And then taking that video name, I'm joining the video path that we assigned of videos and then grabbing that video name to get the current video path, because we're going to do a rename down here and we're going to rename it to videos and then request node origin name. So like this would be test underscore click. This would be test visibility. And that's what we're putting here in this request node original name. And then we have browser name, which is Chromium, uh, WebKit, Firefox. And then we're just gonna include the .webm at the end. So this is gonna be our actual updated file path. Well, the video doesn't actually exist until this context closes. So after the context closes, we can do our rename here. Since I grabbed whether the test, how many tests had failed, I'm, I'm only able to know that this test is a pass or fail based on if this count is equal to or not equal to that. And since this test was successful, if they're equal, I have no real reason to keep it. So I'm just gonna remove the test at that point. So hopefully that makes sense. We're getting the current name of the file. We're grabbing the path off that file. Then at this point, we're grabbing an updated path to rename it to. We're letting the file get saved and then renaming that file. If the test passed, we're going to delete it because we don't care about it anymore. If we come back over here now and just run these tests, I'm going to flip back over here and go to videos. You can see here that we have a whole bunch of tests. Uh, we have test click Chromium. We have test CSS class. So those are the name of all of our tests. And you can actually see the browser that they were running, which is Chrome. What's funny here is that this should actually be deleting tests, but it didn't. All these tests blew up. You can see here there's 12 problems, so we got 12 tests. Our rename worked, but we have to fix the rest of those problems. But basically, it's missing a definition, and the only way to get this definition is basically copying and pasting it in. So, the, so in the documentation, there's this handle page go to. I'm just going to copy this here and paste that in. And then if we rerun all these tests, see if we get any passing tests. We have quite a few tests passing. And if I collapse these now, you can see we only have, it looks like one failed test. So in our folder now, we should have one failed test. And we do this test login logout Chromium. And if I open up that video, we can double click here and see it did try logging in, but it ended up doing an invalid username because it looks like it missed that field. You can see we have our imports that we pulled in from our file. We have our setup here where we created our browser so that it could actually record. We defined the folder that we're going to use. And unfortunately I have to also do this in the session start just because I couldn't figure out a way to get this one referenced in these without the session blowing up. Um, if someone does know how to get those out of there and reference the same one, please let me know in the comments because I would love to know how to do that. As long as these four stay in sync, all the rest of the places that use it will automatically adjust. And we just added a couple lines here to get the video name and then the paths renamed. And now we have it so when we record any failures, we keep as videos and the rest get deleted. To make this even better, if we include all browsers here and go ahead and rerun these tests. So here we're going to go ahead and, and test it with all the browsers and we're just going to run PyTest. And now it's going to run our 12 tests across all three different browsers. So we get some green dots, we get an F, 
some green dots in the F. So if we open up the video folder here, we'll see that we got a login logout failure on Firefox, a login logout failure on Chromium, a, a test text input fail on Firefox, and all the rest of the tests are just going through, recording, and then deleting after they're uh, passing. So we had six failed tests, we have 30 pass, and we have all those tests here. We can go see kind of why those tests were failing, which is kind of helpful, but then you can also go back and go to the video and see what was actually Mr. Because it says it failed on the assertion, but then you need to figure out what actually didn't get filled out on the page. If you guys got value, please like the video, subscribe if you want to see more videos on Playwright.